Some things move us emotionally. One is music. At a musical concert, we may be moved to tears, and then we realize the music we hear can be seen in the pattern of notes we call sheet music. All quite wonderful. A similar emotional experience is seeing the stars on an extra clear night, and similarly wondering if it all follows a pattern, a pattern to the universe. And we wonder what that pattern might be. As it happens, Isaac Newton discovered the pattern, which accounts for the roundness of planets and stars, how they pull on one another, and how each shining star pulls itself into a tight ball of gas. That pattern is represented in a simple physics relationship between force, mass, and distance, which is much less complex than the simplest sheet music. It is called the Universal Law of Gravitation. Would you like to see the pattern? Here it is. A physics student can learn to read this pattern just as a musician can read the notes on a page. That's what we'll do on this screencast. First of all, the law states that there's a force of attraction between all pieces of matter. The relationship here treats two bodies of matter at a time. The attractive force between two bodies, say of mass m sub 1 and mass m sub 2, is proportional to the product of their masses. The d square in the denominator tells that the force varies as the inverse square of the distance between the centers of the bodies. The story of how Newton came to discover this law is fascinating and we won't get into it here. Instead, we'll just see if we can read its sheet music. We'll begin with a simple situation. What happens to the force between two planets if the mass of one of them, say m sub 1, is doubled while the separation distance remains the same? Can you see the force is doubled? I hope so. And what happens to the force between them if both masses, m sub 1 and m sub 2, are doubled? I hope you can see the force is four times as much. The symbols guide our thinking. Now let's consider distance, the inverse square law. Consider a pair of the same planets when the distance between their centers is doubled. How is the gravitational force between them affected when they're twice as far apart? Here we have, is this right? No! We have to include the two in the distance to be squared. We square the two, which, aha, gives us 4d squared in the denominator. Can you see this results in one-fourth the original force of gravity? And what happens to the force if the planets are ten times as far apart? Can you see this results in one-hundredth the original force of gravity? Or instead of the planets farther apart, consider them closer. What happens to the force between planets when their distance of separation is half as much? Can you see that the force increases with closeness, that the force isn't twice as much, it's four times as much? Again, the inverse square law. A yum-yum law once you get the hang of it. About a century after the time of Newton, careful measurements of gravitational force in the laboratory showed that for a pair of masses at a carefully measured distance, the ratio of gravitational force F to the product of their masses divided by distance squared produced a number, the same number whatever the masses and distances involved. In standard units of Newton's kilograms and meters, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th, a very tiny number indicating the tiny force of gravity between objects small enough to be in the lab. This is similar to the circumference of a circle C divided by its diameter D, always producing the same number, 3.14, which we call pi. Pi has no units because distance divided by distance in the same units cancels. Whereas pi is for circles, the constant of proportionality for gravitational force, that is the universal gravitational constant, is the capital letter G, and it does have units. 
With g, we convert the proportional form of Newton's law to the exact equation. To emphasize that the distance between objects is a radial distance, straight line between their centers, it's common to use the symbol r in place of d. The symbol r stands for radial distance. If you were asked on an exam to cite the units of g, could you do it without memorizing it? Yes, you can. You simply let the equation guide your choice of units. We see force in newtons, masses in kilograms, kilogram square actually, and d square and meter squared. So the units of g are newton meter square per kilogram square. If you know the equation for a quantity, you need not memorize its units. They follow from the equation itself. Again, equations guide thinking. Let me leave you with a question. Suppose an astronaut lands on a planet that has twice the mass of Earth and twice the diameter. How does the astronaut's weight differ from that on Earth? Let Newton's equation for gravity guide your thinking. Until next time, good energy. Mm -hmm.